Hello, can you hear me? You guys can hear me behind? Okay, very good. Thank you. Um, th this was kind of an, a last minute change in plans. Uh, Dr. Mohan Agashe, who is a Padma Shri winner, an outstanding um, actor, uh, he couldn't make it on time, not because, um, not because uh, he didn't want to or any of that, but actually when we booked the flight tickets, instead of 1 p.m., it was booked for 1 a.m. Uh, and so last moment, we realized it, we sent the tickets to him. Uh, he was supposed to be here at, if he, if, he land, if he had taken the flight at 1 p.m., he would have been here, obviously, by 3 o'clock. So he couldn't make it, but he's here, to, he's here in the next couple of hours. We couldn't shift the whole event. Uh, but he's going to be here tomorrow in conversation with Rajni Bakshi. It'll be a fascinating conversation. Um, but having said that, uh, you, you couldn't have found a better partner to have this conversation. Uh, two very dear friends of mine who are at the forefront uh, of the disability movement, Arman Ali and uh, somebody from the industry. So I'll just basically ask two or three very, uh, very simple questions. One is, uh, what is the role of art? Uh, and the reason I'm asking this question is um, sometimes the impact of art is felt after a long period of time. Uh, and having worked in the corporate world, a lot of people are focused on just numbers. Uh, how many jobs have you created? Um, and how much, you know, what is the impact? It's very hard to measure the impact uh, of a movie, of a song. Uh, and so the first question that I have for Joy uh, is what is the role of art, what is the role of music in uh, driving social change? Um, you, you know, I always say movements across history have happened uh, because of powerful songs. Every movement has an association with a th song which could be an anthem. Uh, and movements have, uh, songs have played a very integral part to driving change uh, in the society. So my first question is to Joy Barua as to what does he think about the role of art and music, especially music, because he's a musician himself. That's the first song. And the second is why is it that uh, we haven't done more movies uh, focused on disability and other uh, social issues? Why haven't India seen as many as we should? Uh, and what do you think should be done to take that discussion forward? Uh, this is my question to Joy Barua. Thank you, Firuz, for having me here. And uh, hello. Uh, uh, over the ages and since millennia, I think art has chronicled history. And it has told the story of ages. You found it in the caveman's drawings. You found it in classical music. Music was commissioned so that it chronicled history and events and things. Now, I think the role that art has is humongous. Have we dealt with it in that fashion probably in this age and now, if I should say, I probably not. But art uh, creates, uh, if it has chronicled history, it also has created empathy and understanding of situations, stories, people. Have we created the right art to create the right empathy for this in this country? Probably not. And I often listen to people who, you know, have this whole thing on a conversation. It's like a soft power. I don't think it's a soft power. It's a very huge psychological weapon. People, I've heard very intelligent people in a room saying that it's a, it's a great soft skill, soft power, etc., etc. But you know, the power of a piece of poetry or a story or a song should never be underestimated. Like we were in an earlier conversation, you know, music had the power to stop the war, the Vietnam War. Music did a lot of things. Some of the best music chronicled what the world was facing and what it felt. I think in this particular, you know, uh, you know segment, uh, we have moved towards creating infrastructures which have helped the ones who needed. But what is infrastructure without emotion? Does a mom work with a kid because there's infrastructure or because she has emotion? And then I think everything should work together. I'm not saying one is bigger than the other, 
but I think there has been an absence of art in, in, in understanding and in treating a situation and in making a situation better. It would have created empathy, it would have created understanding, it would have created kindness and so much more. Uh, but uh, we have mostly in this country in the recent probably two, three decades chosen to deal, deal with this in terms of institutions and planning from the government and institutions. But we've not used the most powerful tool, the most psychological tool in helping society understand because like they were saying, don't change us, you know, change yourself. You know, this is the way it is. You know, we are, we are all built a particular way. We are what we are. So fundamentally, art can be used to affect change. It hasn't happened, but I think that gives us the scope to work at it. And I think which is the answer to the second question. If you're looking at a particular kind of movie to address a situation, you've always seen that people from that segment have worked towards that kind of story. Yeah. I think, like somebody said, this is a movement. Yeah. Why not this movement breed fire into storytelling? Such amazing two short films. And this could have been complete a long 90 minute and probably could have been bigger, wider. I think uh, uh, the harbingers of change have to be within, from within the community. Yeah. You know, I, for example, geographically, I'm from the Northeast. I cannot expect somebody from Bombay to tell my story. Mm. I, my village has to tell the story. My village has to stand up for oneself. So I think it is this village and this commune that has enough strength intelligence, resources, and learning to create what it should. Beautiful. Uh, Arman Bhai, I know a lot of the work that you do is uh, at the policy level, um, but are there any special focus on arts? Because I know a lot of the discussion is about, you know, for example, um, one of the things is how do we include uh, disability in the census. Now that's a policy discussion. Uh, how do we ensure that there is enough employment for people with disabilities? Those are policy discussions. What is happening on the art side? Uh, is there any policy discussions happening on the art side or is that more like, okay, that's an afterthought. Let's figure out the basic stuff first. Let's make our roads accessible. But is there something happening on the policy side when it comes to arts? No, first thing, Firoz Bhai, you make me sound very boring as a person. <laughs> yeah. So I also like movies. I also like to, you know, watch movies and art is very important. And uh, I echo my country brother um, <laughs> joy that, you know, uh, stories has to be told. And uh, we have uh, maestros like Bhupin Nazarika who has told many stories for generations like we've been mm. following and many of them. Now, when it comes to art and people with disability, I think, you know, um, the discourse is again to remove barriers. Mm. You see uh, this uh, petition filed for the movie Pathan to be made accessible to people who are blind. So there is a positive order and now it has been made, uh, it has to be made uh, uh, accessible for people who are blind with, uh, uh, you know, um, closed captioning and so on. So it is not that uh, it is not in discourse. You look at cinema theaters are becoming accessible. Mm. When you want to book it through a, an app, it gives you an option where uh, there are two seats which indicates that it uh, disabled people who are wheelchair user can select that. So uh, one, I think uh, this discourse will change when people are able to access. Mm -hmm. People uh, who have different kind of disability are able to lo uh, look at movies, understand, participate, opinion uh, is formed. So I think that discourse is on. Uh, there are a lot of people with disability who are uh, artists themselves, musicians, you, you know yourself, yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, from a policy perspective, I think f the discourse which is on, and very aggressively, uh, mm. I must tell you, there are, there are young people who are working on making OTTs accessible for people with disability in India. So I think that's uh, the first step, I think. So the more and more people who are able to uh, access uh, entertainment, access art, uh, look at Museum of uh, photography and art in Bangalore, yeah. you know, one of the first in India to which has been made accessible Absolutely. for people with disability. So there is this movement and uh, we're getting there. Fantastic. 
Um, to Joy, I, I think for people who've been part of the Inclusion Summit, come here many times, we've had uh, a lot of movie directors, and we, there's one interesting debate that often happens. One is, when you're making a movie, should the person with disability be played by a person with disability, or should it be played by an actor? Uh, that's one discussion. The other uh, very interesting discussion, mm -hmm. and um, Nagesh Kukunur, who made Iqbal, which I think is one of the best movies mm -hmm. where, where the main protagonist is uh, a person with disability, and he said something very profound. He said, focus on the story, not on the cause. What you want to make is a good movie with the story, and the story should be so profound that the disability is kind of slowly part of it, right? The focus is not so much on the disability. And you as a musician, uh, and all of you here should please be on time here tomorrow sharp at 8.30 because what Joyda has done, and this was a challenge that I gave him last year, I said, you know, we started last year's Inclusion Summit with a performance by deaf children, and I said, you have to curate a performance by uh, blind musicians. So tomorrow's morning act, and they're all here, they're all going to jam later today. Uh, and that's curated by Joya himself. So be here on time tomorrow at 8.30 sharp. But my question to you, Joy, is two things. Is it possible to very consciously ensure that there are people with disabilities in the band? Or would you say let talent be the only way that a person can become part of, in your case, a band or a movie? It's a very complex question. It, it has multiple layers, but I wanted to understand your point of views. See, I think if you're doing somebody a favor, I don't think it'll pan out in the long run. Mm -hmm. Having said that, I would, you know, handle things with, you know, kindness. But uh, as you see, tomorrow morning is what I wanted people to see. These are all guys in the trade. They are guys from Bombay. They are all a bunch of amazing musicians. You know, we don't need to, you know, they are musicians. It's just that they have a different ability and probably a lack of one. But that hasn't stopped them from being the best. You will see them at the top of their game today. And that is what I wanted to curate. And uh, I, uh, in the long run, probably, you know, a favor wouldn't work. But, uh, but I, that's the whole thing. What about the years before? Mm. Have we handled such talent? Have we given them the kindness and the space to explore? Mm. You know, do, do, have we made institutions for them to walk into where they feel not very challenged, but you know, to embrace? Because everybody is not really a badass fighter at the end of the day. Mm. Musician, musicians are sensitive people, and when you take into account that the fact that they might be suffering from the loss of one ability, so it makes for very uh, sensible handling. Mm. So the question, the answer will be over a length of time. You know, it's a continuum yeah. thing. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Thank you, Jada. And, and Arman Bhai is here, so I don't want to just focus on arts, but one of the things, he's one of the fiercest fighters in this country for rights of people with disabilities. It's an absolute privilege to have him here with us. And I want to, you to share, really, what's the big, uh, big policy topic that you're fighting on? I know you had spoken about insurance, so I wanted you to give a, a little, little gist of what is happening on the insurance front and what's the big big fight that you're fighting right now, Arman Bhai? So I, I think insurance uh, till uh, earlier this year, people with disability doesn't have uh, health insurance. And I think only out of 21 categories, 11 categories are able to get insurance. Like I didn't have insurance uh, from last seven, eight years I've been trying. Eventually I have uh, managed to get an insurance uh, myself despite for despite being in a position where I can influence certain people, I was denied again in June and again after that, also despite talking to the company and so on, but eventually it has happened. So there's a Delhi High Court order uh, which uh, resulted in IRDAI, in, in, uh, Insurance Regulatory Authority of India, to ask all the insurance companies to introduce a product for persons with disabilities to cover their health. So there is a product which is issued by most of the insurance company, which has a five uh, lakh coverage uh, and comes with a premium which is slightly higher than uh, the regular insurance. So what I want uh, uh, to make an appeal to each one of you here, 
there is an acute lack of awareness amongst uh, the insurance companies and the disabled people themselves. We must <coughs> reach out to insurance companies. Uh, this scheme which has been introduced, we must apply for that for ourselves who are disabled people or for, or for your children or anybody else who think has this disability and start the process. When, when we start reaching out, when you make these applications and you know, when you go through the process, a lot of this will open up because there is a uh, lack of understanding. Hardly people reach out to uh, you know, insurance companies. Certain disabilities, like the blood disorders, is a challenge. Like, you know, people with 80% uh, and above, I have 80% disability. So, you know, that's a challenge for them. But when they uh, meet you, when they talk to you, when you look at your papers, uh, it makes a lot of sense and they do make an uh, uh, offer. And, and, and I think it's very important that all of you reach out if you don't have in, an insurance already and, and, and take advantage of the situation. And that will, I think, numbers will, will increase it and make it more business sense. So that's, I think, very, very important for all of us to do. Uh, we are also trying to talk to the government of India trying to look at how Ayushman Bharat can include disabled people into the scheme. Um, so there's a, this is going to be a long haul, won't work in a six month or one year time. It, it's, it'll, it's a long process, I think so. Yeah, fantastic. As I said, I, having been in the uh, disability field for the last 12 years, I've seen progress. Um, progress is slow, it takes time. India is a large, complex country with 1.4 billion people, it takes time. But I just want to uh, let you know that people like Arman are f fighting for many of us here. Um, so before I conclude, I just wanted to share that, you know, we believe that songs have the ability to change people's mindsets. Uh, one of the things that I requested Joyda last year was to uh, make a theme song for the inclusion movement. Uh, movements are, uh, are, are amplified through music, uh, and I'm very uh, happy that last year he uh, performed the theme song, but we'll be releasing the official video of the theme song uh, tomorrow. So two outstanding individuals who are doing their bit to build the inclusion movement in this country, please bring them a big round of applause.